Nope, you don't have to do anything. And then we just kind of chit chat for a minute, kick the can, that kind of thing, while we wait for people to join, um, just because it takes them a few minutes. Okay. So, um, and then, then they'll start coming on like crazy. Okay. So, what is, what just while we're, we're chit-chatting, what is your, they're not used to me being so timely, honestly. I'm usually <laughs> a few minutes behind. <laughs> um, but um, what is, what's the funnest thing that you're, you're creating right now? Huh. I'll be honest, my best creativity is helping others be creative. Uh, owning the business okay. is pretty much a full-time job, and I am just really lucky to have all kinds of wonderful creative friends who bring their things and lend them to me and show me what they're doing. And But honestly, I don't get to do a whole lot. <laughs> you know what? I can relate because that is my life. All I yeah. do is sew samples for the shop or fix people. Like, you know, my bartender the other day dropped off like six pairs of shorts that he'd he put holes through the pockets. Uh, I'm like, I am not a mending person. Like I, I don't mend, I know. but you, but how do you tell your bartender? No, that's, oh. that's a word. <laughs> My mom's birthday coming up in three weeks and she's quite short. Her inseam is 24 inches. Yeah. And so everything, even when it's petite has to be shortened. And I've had these uh, kind of sweatpants for her that I've had for almost a year that I haven't shortened. And so right. I hired a friend to shorten them because I wasn't ever going to get to it. Right. No, that's me. My husband, he has to have everything shortened too. And so he, I, he has to take it to the cleaners, but yeah. apparently the cleaners don't fix shorts pockets that really <laughs> probably should just be thrown away and buy a new pair of shorts. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Here okay. we go. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Rondi. Hey, Kathleen and Peggy. Hey. Um, Elizabeth says, how fun. She loves the silks. And um, thank you, Kathleen. She says, I do the same thing. I inspire everybody else. Hi, Diana. Hi, Cindy. Oh, thank you. All right. Um, no, uh, Lynn says, no mending or hemming. Lynn, we know you don't mend or hem because you don't even sew on your own bindings. Um <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right. So, um, so, I, oh, thank you, Diana, for sharing. Um, so I just want to welcome Susan to joining us today. She owns, um, with her husband, Trenway Silks. And, um, how did you acquire that? I mean, that's kind of a big, big well, thing to take on. Uh, I purchased it from the founders back August 11th, 2011, August 1st, 2011. So we're coming up to the 10 year anniversary of us being the owners, but Trinway Silks is celebrating its 44th year of silk. So uh, the founders had it for a really long time. I was in that wonderful 2008 recession where everybody lost their job. And then I went to grad school and hid for a year so that I could recuperate because those 60, 80 hour work weeks get you down. And when I was getting out of grad school, uh, I saw that Trinway Silks was looking for a buyer. And my first thought was, oh, there's no way that would pay the mortgage. And then I thought, well, how do you know if you don't ask? True. So it pays the mortgage and we eat beans and rice. <laughs> Well, there you go. Well, you know what? That, as long as you're doing something that you love, um, yeah. it, you're creating a lifestyle. And those 60 to hour, 80 hour weeks kill you sometimes. Well, and one of the best pieces of advice Karen, the founder, gave is if there's any way you can have it in your own home, do that. And at first I thought that'd be a problem because I'm kind of a workaholic. And so then I'd be working 24 seven. Mm -hmm. But today... Uh oh, all right, girls. Did did you lose power? Okay. Um, I gotta call my mom's um place real quick and tell them to go down and get her for her second vaccine. So I'll be okay. out for a moment. Sorry. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, girls. She's gonna deal with her mom, who's in a um assisted living, and she's getting her vaccine, but she can't hear. So I am going to show you. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of things that I've been working on here at Fabric Chicks till um, Susan comes back. But I um, look at this. I'm going to have to show you myself because I'm on the laptop.
But look at, I turned this into a pillow. Can you see I've got the uh, metallic-y silver rickrack. I've got the silver trim you girls all bought not too long ago. I know I told you I was going to be doing this, but I finally got it done. So uh, I never know which way on the laptop to, to move it. So there's one project I got done. And then, um, okay, you know what you know how, what it's like when you work from home. Um, oh, Diane says she mends her own, mint, she mends, makes window treatments, sews clothes, knits, weaves, you name it. Oh gosh, Diana, I only do what's fun. And mending always, uh, I don't know why, but mending, cause you gotta make it look good. Um, mending is not my friend. Um, okay, Lynn, the crystals are not popping off. Even when I turned it inside out, because it was pretty stiff because I put it on upholstery fabric, um, I and the plastic is stiff. When I turned it inside out, I was super worried about the crystals popping off, but nothing has popped off yet. I'm holding my breath, but it was super easy. I was a little bit worried about sewing, um, I don't know if you guys can see, but I did like a zigzag stitch in like a light blue um, to attach the trim on. Um, and thank you, Cindy. Uh, it's one of the diamond arts. Can you see how, how glittery it is? It's diamond art. So the diamond art has trees in winter, spring, um, Winter, spring, and then the pink one and the green one. I'm not sure what those are for. Okay, wait, Susan's back. Here, I'm gonna add her back. That was so quick. It was. All so, right. Okay, so we're gonna talk about Silk Fusion today. So how many of you have done Silk Fusion? How many um, of you even know what Silk Fusion is? I don't think too many of them know. I've demoed it several times, but they, Sometimes they don't really pay attention. <laughs> okay, well, Silk Fusion is something that you make yourself, and it's made with silk. Uh, this is silk roving, and roving is a how the silk is prepared. So you could have a wool roving or a cotton roving. It just means that all of the fibers are going in parallel together. You use this, and you make Silk Fusion. Things that you need... Um, the book is extremely helpful. It's not required, but it's extremely helpful. And Tamara is a friend of mine and she came to, she had her own studio uh, where she was teaching classes and she came to me and said, Hey, I need something new to do. Got any ideas? And so I just pantomimed through what Silk Fusion was. And she's like, okay, I think I get that. And she went off and was so incredibly talented that she even wrote this book, which has been amazing. Everyone loves it. There's a little uh, Silk Fusion starter kit packet that has the screen, instructions, uh, silk roving, the, uh, sorry, mine, I'm not in the same order that I am, <laughs> the textile medium and the uh, paintbrush. And then since the Silk Fusion in here is natural, undyed, then we always need to have something that's dyed because we really all care about color. And then just a little extra bonus is the sorry fibers. So when you get done, okay, those are all the cool things, but what is it that you have when you're done? What you have is you've made a piece of felt. Now it's called felt because it's a non-woven fabric. So it is fabric and it's got flexibility to it, but it's not quite like your cotton fabrics. It's not as fluid as that. You are in charge when you are making Silk Fusion. One of the few times that you can really say, it can be how I want it to be and no one can tell me different. You can make it thick, you can make it thin, you can make it three layer, you can make it one layer, any way you want to do it. Sometimes you know what you want to make when you start creating your piece of silk fusion, what you'll want to use it for, and then you'll know how thick to do it. Other times, oh, you just want to play with color and this is so fun and so easy that you just make something and then later you figure out what you want to do with it. So today, I'm not going to do a full a demo because we've got YouTube videos that are, one is inspiration, one is supplies, and then there's three on how to do Silk Fusion. And the advantage of looking at it on uh, YouTube is that if you don't wanna listen to me, you can like you know zip through it because I can get kind of chatty sometimes. <laughs> 
But what I'll show you today is really one of the most important things is how to handle the silk roving. So every time I pick up a piece of silk roving, because these are my ends and pieces, and they're all like kind of scraps and they get sort of uh, messy looking. So every time I pick one up, I hold my hands together about this far apart and I just pump it. You can think of this as, you know, your feet riding a bicycle. You can think about it as uh, milking a cow, depending upon, you know, where you might be from. I'm originally an Iowa girl, but I have never milked a cow. And what that does is it puts in air and it gets all the fibers nice and parallel and happy again. So then to create your first piece, and I'm going to have to move the phone here to get down to my desk, you would actually start with a piece of silk of screen. So it can be a fiberglass uh, window screen, and that's what's in your starter kit. I'm just going to do it on the table here because I'm not going to go through the whole thing. So if this piece is too long to use, it's actually about right. But if it would be too long, you notice when my hands were like this, it doesn't come apart. I'm pulling as hard as I can, and it does not come apart. But to make it come apart, I take my hands a little further, and I just gently tug. And if it doesn't come gently, then move your hands a little further apart and go tug. Ah, and it separates. Now you can tell I'm in Colorado and look at all that static electricity. Woo! That can sometimes be a problem. So I have my handy dandy dryer sheets. Now some people will actually rub their hands, rub this on the silk, the dryer sheet. I don't choose to do that. I just kind of rub my hands and that's enough to make it go a little, uh, to take some of the static away. So now I'm gonna move the phone and set it down so you can see the table here. Let's see, okay. So to do a pin, and I'm gonna kind of work this direction. So you see how wide this is? This is a really wide piece of silk. That's gonna be a little too difficult to work with. So I'm gonna take and separate it Okay, can you see that? And then now, with all the static electricity here, I'm going to lay it down, and then there. Now you can see my finger. If I put my finger at the very, very edge, I'm not sure that I can do that right. Um, sorry about that. If you do it at the very edge, you leave almost no silk on the ground. If you move further in, you're have your finger over a lot of silk and you'll lay a lot down. For this layer, I want to do pretty thin, so I'm going to be right here. And that was BC who came up to uh, supervise. And then you just lay it down next to it, put your fingers on the edge, and just tug. And you can see that that's a pretty thin layer. All right, BC, no help, honey. There you go. I know, baby. I know, honey. I know. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. There you go, baby. I get lots of help. He just came in from the outside and he always has to come running in and say, oh, mom, I love you, I love you, I love you. And so you just keep doing that. That's how you do your layers. And then to do a second layer, you're gonna go vertically. So you're gonna go at a 90 degree angle. The first one I call the east-west layer. The second one I call the north-south layer. And then you can keep going again. So that's just how you handle the silk. Anything else is really easy to do. It's just if you've never handled roving before, that can be the little bit tricky part. So now that you have the basics, so the steps are to do the silk fusion. Um, and these steps are in the, in the YouTube. You make a silk sandwich. So you put down a piece of, of, of window screen, and then you do your silk fusion layer one this direction the north-south direction, the east-west direction. Then you can put some optional fun stuff on it. And that's what the um, sorry fibers are for. You put the other screen on top of it. The whole reason for that screen is that that's gonna hold all of those loose fibers exactly the way you laid them because the next step is to get it wet. And so you brush on water that has a little bit of soap added to it. And then you, actually let it soak for about an hour so that that water penetrates all the way through the layers. And then you wipe off all the excess water. Seems counterintuitive. You put all that water on it. Now you got to wipe all the excess off. And then you add the textile medium. And the textile medium is this. 
it is, it's in your starter kit. It's basically, I'm going to say this four letter word, glue. We treat it like a glue, but it's textile. So it's meant to go with fibers. And then that's going to effectively glue all the layers together. Once that's done, then you let it dry completely. And overnight in a dry place like Colorado, it might be 48 hours if you're in a really, really humid environment. And then you peel the screen off, you heat set it. Heat setting is really important. The textile medium is an acrylic, which means if any of you are old enough to have had to use, well, or had your mothers use acrylic floor wax, then you know that you know it's water soluble. So if you get a lot of water on it, it's gonna loosen it. But if you heat set it with an iron, that will firm it all up and then you will have something that's much more durable. Okay, that's enough about how to make silk fusion. Now your big question is, well, why would I wanna do it? You know, I've got fabric, why would I wanna make stuff? Well, because it's fun and it's fast and it's easy and it's like being able to be the master of your own universe where you put whatever colors together you want to and have it be whatever you want it to be. So we're gonna go over some of the things that we have done with Silk Fusion. One of the things that I really like a lot, and I'm gonna move a few of these things off of the space here so that I can bring some more things in. We all have applique patterns at, at home, or we've seen that we've been drooling over ones at Beth's shop and we haven't invested in it yet because, oh my gosh, we don't really like to do applique that well, blah, blah, blah. Well, Silk Fusion is perfect to take that applique pattern and express it with Silk Fusion, meaning use Silk Fusion in place of fabric in some of the places. Why would you wanna use Silk Fusion? Well, because it's a non-woven fabric, when you cut it, it does not fray. So what does that mean? That means when you're doing all of these little teeny tiny places, uh, spots on it, uh, you do not have to worry about it raveling, unraveling and then needing to stitch all the way around with a blanket stitch or something like that. On this particular piece, uh, Tamara uh, sewed this for me. She's the author of the book. Uh, she went ahead and stitched around the very edge of all of these using your you know, favorite fusible web uh, process for applique. Because it's not going to unravel, you really would only need to add a little bit of stitching to emphasize the veins of the flowers rather than uh, stitch around all of them so that your quilting adds enhancement to th what the piece that you're doing. And I'll kind of hold this up a little bit more so you can see the whole thing. On this particular piece, um, all of the flowers, the leaves, and the background are made with Silk Fusion. The border is a hand-dyed cotton fabric, but then this little edge right here is kind of fun. It's using, let me get a little closer so you can see it. Uh, there's a piece of recycled sari uh, thread uh, fiber going along the edge of it. And then this kind of feathery part, so you can see that there, sorry. Uh, the feathery part is the edges. When you make a piece of Silk Fusion, you get what we call the feathery edge. See how it has this wonderful edging to it? So that's very unique to Silk Fusion. And Tamara wanted this piece to reflect that it was Silk Fusion. So when she cut it, she cut the edges off and then laid those down in as an inside border on top of the cotton border and stitched that down and then top stitched over with a piece of the sari yarn. Any questions on that? And the same concept. Uh, not any questions yet. Uh, Mary okay. Lou says she's going to use her tax refund to, to buy a ton of silks for her new project. But oh. I didn't realize, are these applique patterns new? Because I didn't realize that you, um, <laughs> that you sold patterns. This, um, I don't sell the patterns. These are just ones that I had in my stash to use. Um, okay. I think my specialty is silk. And there's all kinds of wonderful pattern designers out there and you have good and easy sources to them. So just look at something that looks beautiful and colorful and say, hey, I think that would look beautiful in Silk Fusion. Now, this is another one. This is Sue Spargo. 
Sorry, I'm I'm not used to going backwards it's, to the mirror. Too right, far. it's always the reverse. It confuses me too. Yeah, no. <laughs> It'll take me a while to get my hand to that. Um, and uh, this is actually an old pattern of hers. It was for an African tulip tote bag, but we decided to just make a piece with it. One of the things with uh, Sue Spargo that makes her stuff so wonderful is she does all of this layering. I'll get in here close. And you can see on the flower, uh, there's an under layer and the top layer, and then there's the hand stitching that goes around it. So this, this piece is Silk Fusion. The bird's Silk Fusion, the flower's Silk Fusion, but that under piece is actually, um, Tamara made this one also and used things in her stash. I believe it's a cotton. It could be a really thin wool. And so then, then there's all of the hand stitching that goes along with it. Now you'll notice how there's this beautiful veining in the bird here and also in the flower. And that's, that's happens because when you're making the piece of Silk Fusion, you sprinkle on, when I talked about the fun stuff that you can add, you sprinkle on a little bit of the sari fibers, very little. It's a case of a little goes a long ways and you don't even really see it when it's all layered together before it's finished. And you think, oh, it may not be enough, but it doesn't take much. And it just adds a real richness to the piece that you're not gonna get any other way. And then you can hand stitch on this. Uh, and then the background on this one is cotton. And this little guy over here is made with um, Angelina, the same Silk Fusion concept, but used Angelina for it. If you're gonna be doing the hand stitching like this one, You'll want to think about how thick you make your silk fusion when you get started because it's a lot to go through all of those layers. You can do it with machine and if you're doing it by hand, you can do it, but you're definitely going to need a good thimble. If you do a single layer silk fusion, it'll be much easier to do the hand stitching with it. Any questions? So. Nope, not yet. I think you're explaining <laughs> it perfect because usually they've got tons of questions. They just, I think they're in awe. And, you know, I've shown them the Silk Fusion several times, but I think that until a professional shows them, they don't get too excited. <laughs> you don't give yourself enough credit. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, if you're into applique, but you're thinking, oh, I'm an artist, I can do my own design, then that's absolutely fabulous also. I adore this piece. When I told you that Tamara came and said, you know, what can I do to teach a class? And I told her about Silk Fusion. This is the very first piece of Silk Fusion that she made. And it is just stunning. And she's a great stitcher. Look at that quilting that she put in there to make it kind of look like grasses. And look at the center of those poppies. And I especially like this top poppy where it's using the feathery edge of the Silk Fusion to make that unique piece of it, that unique look. The background on this one, the color is called Walker Hook and the flowers are used uh, using Sunset. So those two give really high contrasting colors and they can make really beautiful things. So you think, Like I'm a, what I call a wannabe artist. I really would like to create something from scratch, but I look at that white piece of paper and the mind just goes blank and I'm just, I'm just not there yet. But I would like to be. This process called mosaic, this is what I call perfect for someone like me who's a wannabe um, artist. Tamara in her book will show you how to do this process. And it is on pages 36. Whoops, then I dropped the book. La, la. Okay. So in here, she shows how to do it. She goes step by step, and it can be something that's completely abstract or it can be something that has kind of a flower shape to it. So you can kind of see from that, she starts with a fusion, cuts out a bold shape, and then uh, and makes sure it has uh, the fusible web on the back of it. And then she does some fan cutting on it and spreads it out 
and ends up creating her pieces. And I'm thinking, okay, that I might be able to do. So this is a piece that she made called Sand Mosaic. I think I've got it the right way. Some of these with the abstract, they can go either way. So you can decide which way you like best, but this is actually the way I've got a note on the back of it. Um, one thing nice about this piece is Silk Fusion can either be like really bold, bright, in-your-face colors, or it can be those quiet, tranquil colors that can still make a really stunning piece. And then, this is another adaptation of the mosaic. I'll step back so you can kind of see the whole thing, and then I'll go up close. So in this one, Tamara made a dragonfly, and then she used the mosaic technique to make a really interesting background. And again, because this is silk fusion, you can see going in really closely, those are crisp edges. There's no fraying on that. And she used the no-so applique, but then she also did a little bit of stitching just to hold it down because, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm always worried that all that work is going to go away if that fusion doesn't end up bonding that fusible web. So just a little bit of stitching. But see, in these cases, the stitching is to enhance the design and the flow of the shape, and it does not have to go around every single tiny piece, particularly around those little diamonds. It's just a stitching through the center of it. And on this one, the wings, uh, everything is silk fusion. The wings were done using Angelina. Any, any questions yet? No. Yeah, but it was such a great job. There's no questions. <laughs> exactly. You're so thorough. No, they're just, uh, honestly, they're just in awe. Uh, they're just commenting that stuff is very pretty. Another new technique. Love the bird pattern and the neat effect the Silk Fusion makes. Looks like dyed fabric. Very pretty. Mary Lou says she won't sleep for days. So many ideas. Um, Lynn liked the flower edge. I told Lynn, we, she, Lynn is kind of our conservative. She loves traditional piecing, civil war. I um, for her to we'll well, to we're, the, well, we'll oh. have a East one. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Quite yet, but almost. Okay. This is a different friend of mine. Um, this one is the all seeing eye. Um, Karen Bennett did this particular piece and I'll kind of raise it all up so you can see that's the incredible if I can stand on my toes enough for you to be able to see the top part of it now on this piece again silk fusion is so incredibly versatile on this piece silk fusion is the background this particular background is using the colorway booth bay which my loving husband is going to be dying today or tomorrow he's getting the dyes ready today so this is the background, and then she um, uh, ups, upcycled an old silk scarf that she padded. Let me bring it in closer so you can see it. That she padded and then put all kinds of incredible beads on it. And I don't, I'll put my finger in here so you can kind of see how, three, how 3D that is. Oh, yeah, so yeah. She it and puffed it out to be dimensional. And so in this piece... What's really cool about it is this gorgeous silk scarf that was in her collection of things she never wore anymore. But having that silk fusion for the background gives a, a, a lure to it that you wouldn't get if it was using regular fabric. And that way she was able to create the background piece to be whatever color she wanted to to reflect the eyes. And then these little things are sorry strip. Uh, Yes, yeah, sari strips, and we sell these also. So these are saris from India. Not the used saris, but the edges of saris when they um, are weaving them and things don't come out right. So it's new fabric, but kind of scrap um, and designed for saris, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay. okay, Okay. I got a couple of questions now. Um, Beverly Ann wants to know, so each piece is cut out and attached how? Um, like a Hey, isn't it the uh, fusible web uh, uh -huh. so so you just like you would with fabric where you lay down your fabric you lay down your fusible web you iron it on you peel off the back of it and then you iron it onto your other piece and i hope that's right i haven't done it in a few years <laughs> yeah, no that's that's it it's just like 
It's just like applique, basically. And then, um, so basically, instead of using your cotton fabrics, you're using silk fabrics because that's yeah. what you're creating. Yeah. yeah. And then um, Rondi wants to know what Angelina is. Obviously, Rondi was sleeping when we had that on our, <laughs> our lives. <laughs> you still have Angelina? I have a small, I have a small stash still. I don't, can you even still get it? Because I heard that they went out of business. I, um, I heard that it wasn't available anymore either. And I spent a little bit of time to ask about it, but all my contacts in China and India are for silk. And so I haven't, um, I'm not sure that they would even know what it is and be able to see if it can be manufactured anymore. Right, right. I think that the gal who used to, to, do it here in the US, I think her husband got really sick and I don't know that anybody got the business. So it could just be a thing of the past, I don't know. So now yeah. I'm gonna double the price of what I have left. You know, you might just <laughs> well, but yeah. and if you wanted to kind of, here's an idea, I think this would work. This is one of my off the cuff things that I've never tried, so you know, who knows. But um, if you got like those old Mylar balloons, and then put it down on your rotary cutter and just move every fraction of an inch and just cut strip, 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 so that you'll have, and then wad it all up together. And that will kind of give you the effect of Angelina. Huh. Interesting. I wonder if you can, if, but when you iron it, I don't think it would fuse together. Uh, probably not. I've not used it that way. I would yeah. use it with a textile medium, which acts as the ability to fuse. Okay. Okay. So we just, got, yeah, we just have to experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then um, Katrina wanted to know if the wings are all just Angelina or if you had silk um, in the wing. That is a good question. I'm looking at it closely and I'm positive that it's the eyeballs and the wings are just the Angelina, but made like silk fusion. Meaning yes. Green, uh, uh, screen and then textile medium on top of it to hold it together. Right. Um, okay. Rondi, if this, the Angelina is basically like this plasticky fiber. I don't even know what it actually is. It just is this fabulous stuff. I'll put some on Friday sale. Cause honestly, I don't know that anybody actually knows what it is. I always thought it was polyester, but I honestly don't know. Yeah, me neither. It's just this weird stuff that does fabulous things. No. Um, and uh, let's see, what other questions? Uh, oh, supply and demand. Yeah, money. It's all about money, girls. Okay, <laughs> go on. Um, so for your, for the watcher who likes traditional, this is the cathedral windows. Uh, Tamara made this for me. Tamara makes a lot of things for me. She's really awesome. And I'll bring it in close. She actually used the um, machine uh, version of making uh, cathedral windows rather than the hand stitch version. And then the silk fusion is uh, obviously the very center parts of it. She said it was actually easier to make it this way because the silk fusion is a little stiff and it doesn't fray. So it gave her some body to be able to have when she was working on this. She made it up in a hurry. And so she used just a plain white uh, cloth on it. But just think if you used one of those, you know, beautiful fabrics that you have that you got from Beth's store, uh, it could be really amazing. Mm hmm. That that's absolutely beautiful. I've never I've never I would never have thought to use the silk fusion that way. Um, and Kathleen, the cathedral windows are not that hard. They look hard, but they're not. And then uh, my friend Karen made these. She has so many different fabrics in here and textures that it's kind of hard to tell well, what is the silk fusion and what isn't. But in this little square, I'll get up really close. Oh, see the sheen in it. This is the silk fusion and everything else is batiks. And then and she, uh, she did a stitching over it. And on this particular one, lots of glamour, lots of glitter. And the border, border here, my left hand is not coordinated. The border here is silk fusion. And then this centerpiece is silk fusion. But then it has a lot of the metallic 
on it and ex extra beads. Karen is really all about adding beads and glitter to things. She does really um, stuff that I think I would make look overdone. She just has an art form to be able to make it really beautiful. And then this mm -hmm. is another little square that has the silk fusion and the batiks. So the, the pink is the silk fusion. And this green is fabric. The screen is fabric, and then you can see the batiks. So it's everything that's the solid pink. <laughs> I love it so mixed in with your regular fabrics. It just adds a touch of the unexpected. Yeah, and it's wonderful. In Tamara's book, she's got some beautiful pieces that, darn her, she sold them, so I can't borrow them anymore. But she did a lot of piecing with fabric um, that she had, and then squares of the textile medium excuse me, squares of the silk fusion, and they were really lovely. Uh, so you can tell the big, kind of big giant Vs yeah. are the silk fusion, and then the pink areas were all of the fabric that she already had. Love it. So yeah, you can keep... And that's, again, silk fusion is so amazing. You don't have to do 100% silk fusion. You do some silk fusion and use that to enhance all these gorgeous fabrics that you already have or more that you need to get from uh, Beth so that you have uh, a complete piece. Um, Diana wants to know if you can wash it, if you use it in um, clothing or quilt, will it stand up to be yeah. washed? You were reading my notes because that was the very next thing I was going to talk about. <laughs> Good job out of you. Um, I am, I personally only spot clean things. I do not wash them like in a washer and dunk them and do all of that. Um, and I don't take it to the dry cleaner. People ask me about dry cleaning, but dry cleaning chemicals vary from place to place and they may end up changing the chemicals. So if you wanna have something dry cleaned, take a little piece before you make your huge correct uh, you know, uh, garment or whatever you're gonna make and uh, have them test it to see if it holds up to the chemicals. And if it does, then go ahead and feel comfortable that you can use dry cleaning. However, when you take it in to be dry clean, find out if they are using the identical uh, chemicals that they did when they did the test because they might have changed it. They might have gotten a different brand and those would all be a little bit different. Um, spot cleaning is fine, particularly if you have um, done the proper heat setting, which is why I kind of really harp on that about heat set, heat set, heat set. It's with your iron and you do it on a, hmm, what setting? Silk setting, right? Because you're ironing on silk. And then you hold it in place. And so this is the difference between pressing and ironing. With pressing, you hold it into place, you count to 10, you move it over a little bit, you count to 10. I kind of get a stack going and then I put on a movie and I go in front of the movie and do this. And I know that I'll start out counting one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three. And by the time I get to the end, it's four, 1,000, five, 1,000, six, 1,000, because I'm like impatient. So because I know that my seconds is probably really more like four seconds, then I flip the piece over and I do the backside. And mm -hmm. that way I end up pretty well covering it all. Uh-oh, what happened to you? Where'd she go? I think she was just going to move her camera and then she disappeared. Ma I know. Gracie says yeah. it's magic. Are you there? there? Okay. I I can, can hear you. Hear there you go. I was like, that was like magic. You just like disappeared. Right. You're back. back. Don't worry, Mary Beatty. She's coming back. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Teresa wants to know if this is a good project for a newbie. Okay. I see the live button and I see me, but I don't hear anything. Can you hear me? Ah. So. Wait, can you okay, hear me? Now I can see you, Beth. Can but you I hear me? Hear you. How weird. Okay. Did you turn your mute button off or something? Did you turn your volume down? Wait. 
that I hit can, mic and it turned me back on. Yep. Did can you but hear I me? I cannot hear you. Huh. I see you. I cannot hear you. Hmm. Huh. Um, do you want Did me you to turn? sign out and come back in? Sure. I think you turned your volume down, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave and come right back, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, girls, just be patient. You know, we need a whole technical staff to keep us um, in check. Because I think what must have happened is she hit her, her volume button or something. Because can you girls hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. We're not techie. Stuff happens. <laughs> All right. No kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so, so is this a good technique for a newbie? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, children can do it, but children are fearless. My mom who's going to be 92 next month. Uh, back when she was a youngster of about 85, I was going back to my hometown and people wanted to have, do a little, we did a silk fusion play day. And so I made my mom do it. And she wasn't, she's never done crafts in her whole entire life. It kind of skipped a generation and she doesn't do anything like that at all. And she didn't think her piece was any good, but it was just fine. And I ended up using it to make this. Oh, pretty. Yeah. So I did go ahead and enhance it by doing, I'm kind of jumping ahead to some other techniques, um, but this is a, 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 four, a nine patch and I did rubber stamping. I took acrylic paints really thin on a rubber stamp and took my piece of fusion before, before I cut it and just stamped it randomly. And I got to tell you, this type of surface design is so far out of my comfort level. I stamped it and as I was doing it, I thought, oh my God, I've just ruined this total piece. But I had to have a sample for a class that I was doing in about three hours. So I had no choice but to go forward with it. And I cut it up and mixed it in here, you can see. So I have two different kinds of stamps and you can see I was blending paints when I was doing it. Um, and I, I stitched it all together and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. This actually looks pretty good. So the moral of the story is with any type of art, it's not done until you say it is. And if you don't like it the way it is, cut it up and rearrange it and you'd be surprised how great it looks. And then Silk Fusion is really strong because uh, Silk is very strong. But you notice this little spot right there? It's not puppy proof. My dog grabbed this when I had it out and chewed on the edge of it. And so there, it's not puppy for puppy proof. And she and did this and she chewed up my ribbon that I had going around it. It oh. dogs, they just do what they want. But oh, would, yeah. they, would this be a good, would the silk fusion be good to um, make handbags with? Oh, another perfect segue. <laughs> Yes, it would. <laughs> this particular piece is actually in this, uh, has complete instructions on how to make it, including putting in the zipper. Uh, and this is, you know, quiet on the back, party on the front. And this is in the Silk Fusion book. So complete instructions if you want someone to kind of guide through what you should do. This particular one, Tamara made and um, used Silk Fusion. And it's got a lot of, Quilting, uh, quilting on it. She's really good at quilting. Um, I've never been comfortable dropping my feed dog, so I kind of just do things straight. And on this one, she used a uh, regular, um, regular quilting thread, not a metallic. And then this is a little piece of extra silk fusion kind of done up with the feathery edges to add a little kind of flower bump to it. On um, this particular piece, I'm not sure that you can tell in this light. Let me put this one up to it the same time see if you can tell the difference can you tell that this one is shinier than this one not uh, really 
Yeah, in person you can tell. You can kind of see how the light's reflecting off of this, but it doesn't so much off of this. And uh, Tamara was working in her studio and she had run out of the textile medium. We sell Josonia textile medium. We use that particular one because Karen, the founder of Trainway, got about, I don't know, a dozen different brands of textile median. Granted, this was at more than 10 years ago because I've had the business for almost 10 years. But she tried them all out and decided that with the textile, with the Josonia, the sheen of the silk still came through, whereas other brands gave more of a matte finish to it. And matte may be exactly what you want, but if you're working with silk, chances are you're going to want the sheen. So when Tamma was working, she didn't have, she ran out of the Josonia. So she grabbed what her studio partner had thinking at ah, textile mediums, textile medium, what difference does it make? The moment it was done and dried and she looked at it, she's like, oh my gosh, it, this brand does not give the sheen to it. So I always say you can get any brand that you want. There's lots out there, but you may not get the sheen that you're looking for if you use a different brand. So it's just all about experimenting and what you want. And then this is another little purse. Um, this one, the inside has a lining of a, a sateen. And then this one, I'll go really close so you can see it. This is using metallic thread for the quilting. And the metallic thread with that sparkle just really goes nicely with the silk fusion. Mm -hmm. There's that. It's absolutely you know, gorgeous. And then a little, a little braided handle here. And then here's another one that Tamara made. And so this, oh, sorry, this is a silk fusion going across the top. And then this is kind of a satiny when you open it up and there's silk fusion there. And then this, this is just a flat envelope purse, but with a long strap so you could wear it over your shoulder. And then this purse, I was ready, getting ready to go to market. This was several years ago. And Tamara came over to lend me a bunch of her silk fusion um, pieces so that I would have something to display in the booth. And she was actually using this purse. She was wearing it. And I'm like, oh, my God, I love that. She goes, oh, here. And she dumped the contest and handed me over her purse and said, here, take this and use it. This piece is absolutely fabulous. It gets so much attention. And this has been worn and used. I'm going to go up here really closely. See how much quilting there is. In order to make your silk fusion more durable, Tamara set learned and shared with me, if you quilt the heck out of it, it's going to make it stronger, which, you know, kind of makes sense. Right, now, on right. This one, again, with the, with the light here, because my daylight, it's kind of not going in the window as much as it was. Um, this part of the this part of the silk fusion where the back basically the background that's made with the silk roving like we're used to like we've been showing but this flower i am not able to do back backward stuff <laughs> this flower i don't know if you can tell it has a different feel to it this flower was made using a hanky as part of the silk fusion. And then look at all that beautiful quilting she did to enhance the feel of that flower. It's stunning. And what everybody always comments on is the upcycling. So with this, I'll step back so you can see the whole purse. And then oh, she the belt. An old belt and use that. I as, love it. Yeah, and everybody loves the belt. I'm like, but it's the silk fusion that's gorgeous. Oh, we love the belt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Rondi says you're so delightful. <laughs> and then clipping. I have this jacket. Okay. I have this jacket. It's kind of a swing jacket uh -huh. and this, the, with the shorter sleeves. So the silk fusion are the cuffs on the sleeve. Let me get it flat here so you can see. And then as part of making it, she layered in some of these uh, fancy decorative threads that she had, things that are used for like weaving or, you know, an add in to knitting or something like that. And yeah, put yarn. part of it. Yeah, yarn. That's then, fabulous, girls, for your vest, because we're doing a vest challenge with Linda McGee. That is such a great idea to add on to it. 
Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then I've got a few more things here. I've been yakking here for a while, so we're about done. Uh, other useful things that you can make. So this is my handy dandy checkbook cover. I always say deposit slips in here. If you would like to make a donation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I and love that with the leaves. It's so simple, but it's such a simple project. You could make that for everybody for Christmas. And I want to point out that these next items are really simple. And these are the ones that I made because this is all I'm capable of doing. My actual craft is um, I'm a weaver. So, and I've also quilted for some years, but the quilting part of it, I do the piecing well, the quilting part, not so great, as you can tell, because those, that hand, quilting on the machine was done with the feed dogs down. And so it's a little on the her herky jerky side, but it works. And then this particular one, um, I did this one also. This is a small journal cover. So it's got the feathery edge for the inside flap. And then I have to be able to make these leaves and this, again, I am such a not artist that I went out and found free clip art that was out and used the outlines of that to create my shapes. Even though they're leaves, I'm such a dork. I didn't freeform my own leaves. I went and found some with free clip art. And so on this one, I put the, <laughs> Cut out the, yeah, you can laugh at me. That's fine. I do too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was in such a hurry. I couldn't find my fusible web uh, to be able to fuse it on. So I thought, oh, wait a minute. We use the textile medium as, um, as a glue. So I went and got textile medium because I know where that is. I got that and I brushed a little bit on the back, stuck it on it and then heat set it so that became my glue so that's why i haven't done the fusible web for a while because i can't find where mine is and but that's I, such a great idea that you can use the textile medium for that yeah i'll tell you it's whenever you're desperate that's when you get really creative and I that's find, the truth that's yeah, the truth i was doing a class to non-quilting people so i had to do things that were simpler and didn't require a lot of stitching yeah and so stitching using our silk threads that we hand dye also. And then this is another one that's pr pretty simple. Again, that's my skill level, it's pretty simple. Another journal cover. And the great thing with journal covers is you buy your journal and then you make the piece to go to the right size. You see Perfect. Size. So on this particular one, uh, see, I don't have enough, oh, you can almost see. Do you see the little glitter in there? Yes, little... yes. Yep, okay. we see it. So this was a piece of silk fusion that I'd had for a while and it had been at shows and it had been handled a whole lot and it was starting to lose some of its integrity. Um, so it needed a little touch up. So I took uh, the textile medium and I diluted it ballparky 25% water, 75% textile medium. I didn't measure it. I just kind of, you know, blob blob and did that. And then I thought, oh, this is going to be stars in the sky. Wouldn't it be really fun if I put a little glitter on it? So I got the really ultra fine, teeny tiny glitter. And I put that into the textile medium. And then I brushed all of that over my piece of silk fusion that had already been done, let that dry, and then heat set it. So I've got all of this real subtle little glitter in there. And I love that. And then this one is just another one that I did, again, using um, clip art. Um, it's a little bit bigger journal and it's got ginkgo leaves. I love ginkgo leaves. And on this particular clip art, there was a whole lot of lines in the ginkgo and I just kind of freeformed a few of them. I didn't even mark them down. And that's one reason I really like using things from nature because you, it just freeforms. You don't have to draw lines. You don't have to worry about them erasing. You just kind of stitch and go. And then this particular one, okay. a whole lot more hand stitching on it. Uh, this is Liz Kettle. I'm not sure. She wrote a fabulous book on threads. She did this one. And on this particular one, how she does it is she stitches on. She does a lot more stitching than I do. She's really good at hand stitching. She does a lot more stitching on it. And then when the piece is done, she... Uh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, We're used to it. Uh, and then this um, is multi-purpose cloth. Here multi-purpose cloth 
And so she takes her piece of self fusion when she's done with all of her hand stitching and then adheres it to the multi-purpose cloth. And then that makes it really strong and sturdy. Uh, and I've got one more little thing. Uh, this is a, I'll get back so you can see it. This is a picture frame. And so it's just a wooden picture frame and it has silk fusion on it. And then it was just wrapped, the silk fusion was made and then it was just wrapped around. And because I don't have a picture, then what I have in the back of it is just another piece of silk fusion that has been uh, grid stitched on it. So you can use it for all kinds of things. That's, That's absolutely beautiful. And then, um, okay, see, Susan wants to know, um, do you secure it inside the book with glue or is it just? I do not. It just has a long enough flap. So when you're done with that book, you could use it for something else. Cut it up into pieces and use it on something else. Absolutely. Oh, I do have another little thing. That do you hand fill your beads on or do you glue them on? Uh, Karen does all of the work with beads and she is a master with a needle and she stitches them all on. She would never glue a bead on. Me, I might. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> and then this is an example of why you keep every little tiny scrap of silk fusion that you have. This is a greeting card that was inside the purse when my dog chewed the little nine patch purse. So that's why it has this little corner out of it because that was all slobbery. But this is simple little pieces. I used a glue stick on this one to adhere it to the card. A glue stick doesn't have the moisture in it that say an Elmer's glue would. So it keeps the paper from warping by getting too much moisture. So I glue sticked it on, I think I used textile medium or a glue stick to do this. And then just to make sure that those little flying geese would stay in place, then I went ahead and did one, one row of machine stitching along it. And then on the inside, you can see there's the little feathery edge. And then this little one, uh, I just wanted to see if you could uh, print on it. And so I took a piece of a, a thin layer a single layer of silk fusion and I taped it to a piece of copy paper, you know, goes into the printer. So just ordinary paper and then fed it through my inkjet printer. And yes, it prints. Oh, so there's all these kind of great fab uh, products that you can get where you want to print on fabric or do different things. I didn't have any of that. So I just took a thin layer, put a couple pieces of scotch tape on and fed that baby through and it worked. Perfect. And so really you just have to experiment with it, but the it's limitless what you can do. Absolutely. And these are the things that we have done. And I have a whole nother list of additional ideas on this particular one. I've held this up before, but see that kind of, um, what would you call it? Amoeba? Out of yes. So I was doing a demo and there was crazy uh, um, static electricity and the silk just kept going every time I was trying to lay it down and, and do something. So I thought, let's take advantage of that. So I took that blowout poof, which I can probably have it do that now because I've got enough static electricity. And then I laid it down on the paper like that and then or on just the textile medium or the, my, my layers that I was doing. And then I got this incredible amoeba effect, which I thought was really cool. Screens are something that are really interesting. And again, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to tell this. This piece, can you see the texture there? Ever so slightly? Yep, yeah. Okay. This is made with a fiberglass screen, which is the same fiberglass screen that you get at Ace Hardware, which is the same fiberglass screen that we have in the starter kit. So that when you, when I make it, I press really hard to get that water through. And so that ends up making almost a linen-like impression onto the silk fusion. And then uh, you can use a nylon screen that's used in uh, tent campers. So it's, it's really thin, it's, the holes are really fine and the threads are really fine. And then that one is going to be a smoother look 
I don't know if you can tell, but there's mm -hmm. no impression on this one. Yeah, you can see it. And then um, this one is a single layer of Silk Fusion. And so to be able to do single layer and have it peel off, because I mean, look at that. You can just see straight through it. I love that. Let me get something behind it here. You can kind of see the little holes in it. Yeah. Um, so this one was made with a uh, polyester tool. So the cheapest polyester, the cheapest tool that I could find, because you're just going to throw it away after a while. And you can use that to do a single layer. So if you're going to do lots of layering on your applique, then doing single layer to start with is really good. Or it can be really cool to make it wholly on purpose and mm -hmm. then on top of fabric and then do your applique that way or any other type of art. It, it just really is limitless. Right. Well, and it, now that we really can't get Angelina, that would be a great replacement for the dragonfly wings, kind of a sheerer look. Yeah. Yes. And then this one, can you see the texture on this? Yep. This was made using nylon net, which gives a definite texture to it. You can see it on the back, the front side that has all the colors on it. And then the back side, which has less going on, you can still see it really well. So mm -hmm. that's just impression in the silk. And then here's a single layer one that I put up against a hand dyed uh, silk that I had or hand dyed cotton mm -hmm. that I'd done years ago. Mm -hmm. You can see, um, Sometimes I'll make it with holes on purpose so that I get that, that incredible layering effect. And it took me for the first piece I did of single layer was just phenomenal. I had these great holes in it. I loved it. Every other time I did it, I wasn't getting that. It was coming out more smooth like this piece. It took me forever to figure out what my secret was of how to make the holes. And that's called being in a hurry and pouring the water on so it separates the fibers. <laughs> Sometimes you learn the best things when you're rushing. Oh, no kidding. And then you can also do a crinkle texture. So when you're making your piece of silk fusion and you've done your sandwich layer, you've gotten it wet, you've added the textile medium to it, and you're all ready to have it go dry. Before you do that, peel off the screen and you have to do it a little carefully and then carefully get your fingers under it and lift up that silk sandwich. It will hold together. I really didn't believe it until I saw it myself and did it. And then you lay it back down and then crinkle it and you get crinkles, which is huh. really a texture. And then if you want the crinkles to stay, because this piece was the first one crinkle that piece that I did. So it's been around and demo and shown a lot. So it actually, you could press out the crinkles. So you get the crinkles, but it's not like permanent and hard. So then we took some and after we crinkled it, we pressed it, added another layer of textile medium, slightly diluted. And of course, this one has a little glitter in it. Uh, there you can just kind of see the glitter. Mm -hmm. And then that makes it hold in place. So now I'm pulling on it and it, it'll stay in that crinkled state. Okay. So there, and there's one. And then... And do you remove the tool or screen when, the, when you're done with the Silk Fusion? Yes. It will peel off. Um, if you want the silk fusion to stay on the tool, let's say you want to make a garment and so you want it to be really thin, um, then if you use silk organza and put it on really thin, the silk is going to adhere to the silk and so you'll have your fabric on the back that will give you maybe a little bit more supportive back backing. When mm -hmm. you're doing the single layer silk fusion, do the least amount of textile medium possible. Put on so little you don't think you've done enough and you probably still have too much. So that also stretches your textile medium out. You can do inking. This is not a particularly attractive piece, but I put a my rubber stamp and I tried to stamp on it and it didn't turn out very well. So then I took my uh, fine line Sharpie pen and outlined it. So then you can kind of see what the flower is. And of course you can see some glitters in there because I've got glitter going on. And then you can also cut it. If you have one of those, um, those cutting machines, like a, what is Acu it? quilt or something? Yeah. Uh, the Silk Fusion, well, this is a, it's three layers of Silk Fusion, but it's very thin. 
and it cut it out just beautifully. So then you could have all of these little happy flowers to applique. And you can also paper cutters or paper punches, those fancy decorative ones that they have in scrapbook stores, those do not work. Uh, they're not sharp enough to go through silk. Silk is really strong, much stronger than paper. But skinny little uh, paper punch, because it's so small, will do it. So there you can kind of see, there's my mm -hmm. And then you can use that, or you can use a skip stitch rotary cutter to kind of create little cuts in it. And then you can do uh, like ribbon going in and out of those little holes that you've made or those uh, skip stitches that you've done. This piece, this has been around for, oh gosh, I think it was 2013 when I did it and I have not really treated it well. So it's a little hard to see what's going on. But I was at uh, Long Beach Quilt Festival summer of 2013 and I was doing demos nonstop for three days. And after a while, you kind of go, okay, I want to try something different. Well, on the walk from the hotel to the convention center, there was this beautiful uh, hibiscus plant and it dropped this beautiful flower on the ground. So this was not a dried flower. This was actually a fresh hibiscus flower. And I laid it down and then did my whole, at the last step and did my whole textile medium. And for a while it looked really good, but then over time you can tell that the flower has kind of disintegrated because I haven't taken good care of it. But it opens up that possibility of you could do dried flowers, flat things, uh, lots of stuff could go into it. We actually did it as a class one time and a gal put a lot of like wood pieces and all yeah. kinds of, and, and I thought it was kind of crazy, but it turned out fabulous. And this is where I took a little cocoon and I cut the cocoon up. You can kind of see the dimension there on the little nose. He's gotten flattened over time. This was a round and cocoon. What and is that, a cocoon for those who don't know? Oh, a cocoon is what the silkworm, the little silkworm is an egg and he grows. And in three weeks, he eats nonstop 24 hours a day. And then he says, okay, I'm ready to make my cocoon. So just like caterpillars make their cocoons and the moth emerges, that's what the silk cocoon is. And if you take that cocoon before the moth emerges and put it into water, simplistically, kind of warm water, you can find the end of it and then you can unwind that incredibly delicate thread. And that is how all silk is created, is from a cocoon. So this one, um, there, it wasn't a lot of surface area because the cocoon is kind of dimensional. Even when I cut it, oh, I can't quite mm -hmm. get the people there. So I put a really thin layer. You can just kind of see it in there. A really thin layer of the roving over it to kind of help hold it into place. And then sort of did a little simple art piece with it. And you can do color blending. We have 24 different colors of, of, um, the silk roving painted and those are hand painted ones. So each one has multiple colors within it. And then we have six, uh, eight solid colored ones that we always have. And then a few extra ones that we do as a limited edition. So if you, even with all those colors, if you don't have exactly the color you want, you can end up kind of color blending it yourself. Now on this particular piece, let me get up close where you can see it. There you go. Can you see how, there's all, you can see the individual fibers of the silk. So it's a really, really thin layer so that those layers separate and you can see the natural that was underneath it. Or you can take and layer, this is a, you can kind of layer up so that one color goes right into the other one. Or you can actually take, as you're doing your fusion, you can pull off a little piece like this See how wispy thin that is? You can almost see it. You see it? And then yeah. you can take a, another wispy piece from a different color. And what I have right here is turquoise, so it's not going to be a huge difference. And then you can kind of spread those out together. And then when, the, when these come out, you've got a, a multiple colors going on, and it'll have more interest than just a straight flat color. So you can pretty much do anything. And I'm at a, an hour. Oh, and one more thing. We also have... Oh, Mary Lou said it'd be great for doll hair, too. 
Oh yeah, I do have doll uh, people that use it. In fact, we have sponsored a doll show at the helped sponsor a doll show at the uh, Houston Quilt Festival and Houston Quilt Market for three or four years now. And then this is actually silk cotton as opposed to 100% silk. We have some of that to use for silk fusion. And if you want something that's really going to seem like handmade paper, this will give you that effect. I don't know if you can tell. All right, I'm gonna have to get a battery because I'm on low power, but we're also at an hour and 10 minutes. So you're probably saying, shut up woman enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, actually, I'd let you go on forever, except for I have to do another live in 50 minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, okay, girls, so do you, do you have any questions to, that you want to ask before? But we'll have Susan come back, and maybe we'll talk Susan into doing a Zoom class or something. Not that I'm putting you on the spot or anything. Okay, um, okay let's see. Um, all right, girls, do you have any questions? Um, gnome beard and silk gnomes would be really fun. Um, oh, yeah. Judy said she loved this. Thank All you. right, girls, if you have any questions, pop them in real quick. Um, Susan, thank you so much. Um, you know, I actually met you at Houston probably yes. like three years ago. And you were I, doing some quick demos during the, um, oh gosh, what is schoolhouse? schoolhouse. Yep. Yes. And so the girls that I was with, they kept going to different things to get the freebies, um, you know, because all the big fabric companies give out bags of goodies. And I yeah. did not need any more junky stuff. So I just stayed in your classes for the whole time. It was so much fun. Um, Thank you. Well, and then, you know, you get so excited, you buy everything and then you get home and you're like, oh, I don't know, what was I going to do with this? Um, but no, I actually have done Silk Fusion many times. It, I love it. It's fun to be able to create your own fabric. It is. It really is. And then to have that extra sheen to it that you don't get with cotton so that you get that compare and contrast of the sheen to the flat it is really powerful. Yes. Yes. It's fun to experiment with. Even for those of you who aren't so much into the artsy stuff, you can totally put it into your pieced quilts. I love that you showed us samples of that because I don't think that you had samples of that when we were in Houston. Or if you did, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, there was so much that it's hard to remember it all. Right, right. All right. Yeah. They are all just saying that they loved it and they can't wait for to see the next um the next time we have you on. So um, so I I'm gonna to, say, go ahead. I, I didn't get to the hankies, um, but we can do that another time. Oh, for sure, because I have a bunch of hankies and I'm never quite sure how to use them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be super fun. All right, thank you so much, Susan. And we will see you girls um, join. Remember today's Wednesday. So go to um, Wednesday's Wild Life on, Facebook and join us at two. See you in a, see you in a little bit. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.